Croiso friends, today I'm doing something a little different. Kara Lee from Kara Lee Cosplay issued a one day make challenge wherein people are supposed to make one complete something in a day. Now, I have been wanting for a while to make a cyclist, a kind of medieval surcoat popular in the very early 1300s and seen most commonly in the Codex Menes. The cyclist is characterized by a very drapey body and a higher arm side than the Gates of Hell type surcoat, which is what people often think of when they hear cyclist surcoat. So I have these two cotton velveteen curtains from Ikea. They are a lovely weight and drape, and even though they are a color that's not generally seen in manuscripts, it is one that can be achieved through the use of natural dyes. And also I look good in it, so I'm not inclined to care overly much. It is currently, it is currently 9 a.m. I have an empty house, an empty schedule, and a full R2D2 teapot. Incidentally, I am drinking August Uncommon's Passage, a black tea with hazelnut and chocolate. I will put a link in the description down below. Friends, let's get into it. Hello friends. Um, sleep deprived editing Courtney popping in once again. I know uh, two times in three videos is too many editorial asides, but I promise I will try to keep them to a minimum going forward. This video was filmed before Cocovid, and while I'm incredibly grateful to past Courtney for um, scheduling things that way because it does mean that I was able to put out an extra video this month with very little disruption to my release schedule, uh, it does mean that I had no way to address how immensely successful Cocovid was without this side. I am completely and utterly floored by the amount of people who watched my video and decided to stick around and join my merry band of historical misfits. So a thousand thank yous for each of my thousand followers. And on a related note, I know that I had announced that I would be doing a 500 subscriber giveaway right before Cocovid when we hit um, 500 subscribers with the expectation that I would then also do a 750 subscriber giveaway after um, whenever we hit that. Well, uh, we hit that Saturday and that completely threw me off my game because I had not quite filmed the video wherein I made the project that I had planned for the 750 subscriber giveaway. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just, I'll just do them together and that's fine. Uh, and then we hit a thousand subscribers on Sunday and that video project is not even planned until October. So um, I'm overwhelmed in the best way possible. I think what I'm going to do is roll the 500 and 750 subscriber giveaways into one, which will be announced in my next video. Um, again, that one had always been planned to be the project for the 750 subscriber giveaway. I just thought that I would be sitting on that uh, just for just a little bit longer. So one portion of the giveaway will be for the aforementioned embroidered Elizabethan pocket, and the other will be for either a veil or a coif. Um, the winner will be able to pick. And I will outline the rules in the next video. I don't want to get too deeply into that in this editorial aside here. Um, as far as the thousand subscriber giveaway, I think I may move that project up a little bit in my queue and just do that when the project happens. Um, but I didn't want to let everything pass. I didn't want to let it pass without commenting that I did notice that we hit um, a thousand subscribers and that I am so excited and so grateful and so fantastically looking forward to everything that we are going to be doing together in, in the coming months. So, um, okay, back to our regularly scheduled program.
Okay, now that I have the basic layout planned, I am going to grab my curtains and start cutting and laying out on the floor over there. One curtain folded in half isn't quite long enough to be a full length cyclist, nor is turning said curtain sideways. I'll have to use both curtains, which is okay because that will leave me some fabric to make something adorable for the tornado later on. The pattern for this cyclist is basically a sleeveless top with the side seams angled out to the edges of the fabric with the side gores created in the triangles left over by those diagonal lines. As you'll see a bit later on, I've rather hamstrung myself by not extending the length of the side gores up at the top a bit, but it all works out in the end. This velveteen doesn't have a directional pile, so it's okay that I'm cutting the gore pieces upside down from the main body of the garment. Before I sew anything together, I want to double check that the top fits over my bust area. Since it does, it's time to start sewing. In the interest of making sure this is actually a one day make, I'll be sewing using a machine rather than by hand. This velveteen isn't quite as wiggly and naughty as a longer pile velvet, but it still had its eccentricities and I made sure to pin often while sewing. Once the side gores are sewn together, it's time to check the fit again, this time to make sure that there's ample walking room and swishability at the hem. There is, so I'll continue sewing together the cyclists.
Yes? Are you going to stand right there? You need to keep that fabric safe. Alright, so I'm just going to turn this right side out to make sure that everything drapes correctly from the right side. I still haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to be finishing the seams on the inside. I think probably what I will do, see the problem is I'm getting all of these little fuzzies um, and I'm afraid that even if I zigzag the inside seams, it's not going to take care of that problem very well. So I think probably what I will do is um, figure it out later. I have a couple of ideas, but I'm not entirely sure which one is going to be the easiest and which one I could potentially get done today. There we go. It's nice and fitted around the very top, uh, which means that the bottom being flowy doesn't necessarily make me look like a potato, like I'm wearing a potato sack. Um, there is ample, I don't know if you can see it very well, there is ample hem width. So I think I'm not going to have to unpick anything. Um, because of the way I cut these, these side gores, I did have to cut the tips off the very top, which means that at the bottom, the hems are not quite even, but I added enough extra length just in case that I will be able to shorten the front and back hems and just turn them under and it will still be long enough. It'll still be um, brushing the tops of my feet, which is exactly where I want the hem to fall on this particular dress. I'm really quite pleased with the way that it's falling on me and draping. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is take some bias binding and sew the bias binding to the edge of the arm side and then tuck it in and hand finish that by whip stitching it down. The collar I think will be sewn with a wide facing. In the Codex Man S, these facings are generally a gold color, but because I tend to look better in silver and with the hue of this particular fabric, I think silver will go better. I'm going to go raid my stash and see if I can find some silver silk that's left over from another project. And that will be the facing. And then I will figure out what to do about finishing the inside seams. Wish me luck. Okay, I just had a bit of a peek in my stash to see if I could find that silver silk. And unfortunately, I think it's in the box of fabrics, one of the boxes of fabrics that I have at my partner's house instead of here. So instead of being able to completely finish the neckline today, what I'm going to do is um, just do the same thing that I'm doing around the arm size or that I plan to do around the arm size, which is to take some bias tape like this and just bind to the edge on to the inside and that way I can call it finish today and it will be wearable but I will still be able to go back and either add a cosmetic facing on the outside or unpick the bias binding and add the facing um, in a more structural way later either of which is completely fine with me honestly all right.
ended up deciding to finish the inner seams by zigzagging them with a length of wool yarn held at the edge. Finishing seam allowances by felling them down with yarn is actually a medieval seam finishing treatment as demonstrated by the amazing Catafalque blog. I've just taken a more modern approach to it. Here's hoping that this finishing technique will keep all of those tiny little velveteen pills from continuing to shed all over the place. All of the binding sewn on to the neck and armhole openings what I'm going to do is clip the curves and then flip the binding into the inside and pin it and then I will sew this down by hand so that's what I'm gonna do now
Okay, I am all finished with the binding around the neck and arm size. Um, I think probably what I will end up doing is instead of unpicking this later and making a binding that will go on the outside of the silver silk, what I will do instead is just create a collar that goes along the outside and I'll just tuck the edges under and whip stitch that down. And that way I don't have to mess with this and risk it getting all frayed and everything. I think it will look neater that way too. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the ironing board and see about ironing some of these um, wrinkly, crappy looking bits here. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be a problem to iron this. It is a very short pile of velveteen. But just in case, I'm going to take this piece of scrap and see about the best way to iron it. I don't have a velvet board, which is a board that has a, a ton of little tiny spikes on it where you put it face, you put velvet fabric face down on it, pile down, uh, and then iron it from the back. And the spikes prevent the pile from being crushed while it's being ironed don't have one of those they're very expensive but I think I can manage with a very light hand and some judicious steam so let's go see finished pressing everything and the collar and arm sides are now laying much nicer, much more flat. I did press out as many of the big creases as I could without pressing too hard on the velveteen and making it push down. So now the only thing I have left to do is to lay it out on the floor and even up the hem a bit so that I can turn that hem under and stitch it in place. The hem was finished by cutting it evenly, which I forgot to film, and then folding the edge twice, about a centimeter each time, and whip stitching it into place. Here we are, all finished. I kind of am accidentally channeling my inner cotton candy, but it's such a happy springy outfit that I don't even care. I completely forgot to film any kind of outro for this video on my day of vlogging, so I suppose we're just going to have to make do with a voiceover instead. 
If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and if you're the kind of person who likes notifications, do click the bell to turn those on. Otherwise, I upload every other Friday, and you can just be surprised when my video shows up in your subscriptions like a fortnightly birthday present just for you. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and in case you'd like to make a donation to the alms purse and help me buy cat treats as well as tools and materials, the link to my coffee will be in the description below. As always, friends, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Will!